All right, you can use the sensor to identify rocks and chests and materials in the depth of illusion events. Like it's really useful for finding these rocks because they give you dream fragments and then they can also have a cat inside. All right, if you're locked onto a character, which you do with the middle mouse click, you can press it again to switch and it'll cycle through. And then you long press it to remove the auto lock on. And then for this boss in particular, the turtle boss, whatever reason if you go into your character menu while it's spawning you get insane camera shake but also this guy has multiple lock-on spots so you can cycle through them and pick whichever you want additionally you can grapple up to him and destroy the spell there it's destroyed and it didn't really do much at least i don't think it did much maybe it's just a visual thing i don't know all right there's a two-part quest um, that's related to the tiger in my mind and I think it's tied to time in real life so after like a whole day passes in real life you get part two after completing part one and it gives you access to this guy right here and he actually sells you one of these which gives you an access to one of these four star weapons and these are different from the starter pack that we got and you have this guy and you don't have a good weapon for him you can pick up this four star from that package. I mean, you don't have to do this, but I would recommend that you turn off camera shake and you turn off motion blur and vertical sync. For the depths of elusive realm, the characters that you can pick as a perk to like bring them into battle with you, the only ones that are available are the ones that you have unlocked on your account. If you don't have them unlocked, you won't have access to them. So for example, if you have also, you will see Alto popping up, but if you don't have Alto, you won't see Alto. And additionally, this reward right here, it's not an actual five star echo, it's a skin. And then you go over to that echo and then you click this tab right here and you can see this is the normal appearance. Its eyebrows are yellow and then the phantom has blue eyebrows and you can apply that effect to every single Imperial Heron echo that you have. This is where I found my turtle. I don't know if the location is fixed or exactly how it works, but in case it spawns at fixed locations, this is where I found mine. And then you can easily identify it from a far away distance. It's very shiny and it's quite obvious. You should prioritize um, leveling up your character, ascending your character, leveling up their skills, the weapon level before you even consider artifacts. That should be the priority because those are guaranteed upgrades with artifacts it's very rng and if you don't believe me here's an example of how bad the rng can get i was trying to farm this turtle with percent healing with the healing set for verena and i've gone through and defeated so there's three one two three four five six seven eight about nine rows of these or almost 10 rows of these and at union level 30 to 40, you're stuck at data bank level 18. So the drop rate right now is 50-50. And every five turtles I kill, I'll likely get one echo. So if I have 30 five star turtle echoes, that means 30 more were four stars. So in total, that's 60 turtle echoes. And since it's only a one in five chance to drop, I'd multiply that by five, which is 300 turtles. I killed 300 turtles and I still haven't gotten the right stat. The RNG is horrendous early on you're only gonna need two main units you don't even need three teams like you're not even gonna get into that until way later so for me i focused on this guy so he's one of the guys that built and the other person i built was the mc who in havoc form is absolutely crazy like the burst does insane damage and again realistically you really only need two main dps units the stable zone and the experiment zone are basically like up to floors one through eight in genshin they are one time clear and a one time clear reward only but you get a lot of these gems from clearing them so for my clear i literally just use the mc and this unit is basically unleveled like it's level 40 not level too much and it has like a level zero echo sets and then Similarly, on the next floor, I just use two units. Again, this unit isn't leveled up to the max or anything. Level 50 just to get access to one of its skills. And also it has a unleveled echo set. And then I also gave hazard zone a try. This one resets in 11 days. Even if you do have three teams, I, I doubt you will be able to defeat some of these enemies. These guys are level 100 and you're probably going to be capped at level 60 for now. That being said, these two floors, you could tackle them. I only prioritized two units, which is this guy and the MC. So I did a little bit with them on this side. 
and then I did a little bit with them on this side. Unfortunately, I was not able to three star this one. Another trap that you could fall into is trying to get three five star units. Um, so for me, when I pulled on the beginner banner, I got my electro main DPS and then I used the free five star selector to get the healer. And instead of wasting 70 pulls on this banner, what I should have done was done 70 pulls on this banner. That way I can guarantee a five star weapon for my main DPS unit early on. And that would have made my account like a hundred times better. But again, if you don't care about weapons and you care more about character variety, then you can forgo that and just go for the third five star unit. It just depends on you. But I personally think you should go for two five star units. And then the 70 pulls that I spent on this banner, I should have done on this banner. Okay, I've been playing the game fairly casually, except for grinding out the turtle, which I, I would just have the game open in the background and just do that whenever it spawned. Other than that, like... I'm already level 20, although I can't claim it until the next ascension. That being said, I've mostly just relied on just re-rolling through this way. So there's a 50% chance I get a purple and a 50% chance I get a, um, a five star. So like this, for example, and that really made it so much easier to farm the data bank EXP. All I would do is anytime you're exploring, make sure you kill any enemy that you see, especially if it's non-human because there's a good chance you might get, an, there's a 20% chance it'll drop an echo and over time it'll build up a shit ton. And even if you're just playing casually like me, you get a absolute shit ton of gems. So for example, I only have 48% exploration, 22%, 29%, 43%, 38%, 29 29%, 29%. So I haven't done a whole lot. I have done all the quests, well, at least most of them, but they slowly keep popping in. And then additionally, even though you might think you've done all the quests, a lot of them don't appear unless you're like, unless you're near them. So if I teleport over to the city, it'll show a ton more side quests that I have available that I haven't done. So now if I open the map, as you can see, all of these quests popped in, including this one, which looks like a main quest, but I haven't done it. I haven't been grinding absolutely crazy. I've been playing it fairly casually and I am currently union level 32, almost 33. Yeah, I have 65 polls on the um, events banner, 20 of which were free. So 45 polls with gems, which is 7,200. And then on top of that, I have 7,500. So that's almost, that's very close to 15,000 gems. So you get a lot of gems in this game. I can easily pull and get a five star right now. Last thing I want to touch on is parrying. Initially, I thought it was a bit unfair, but a lot of times you get locked into animations. So for instance, I got hit there, I get locked into a recovery animation, which prevents me from parrying. But also, most of these bosses have a set pattern that you can follow. So this guy will just walk. This is a free opportunity to hit him. And then he'll chain it into three parries. Here we go. First parry. And then second parry. And then third parry. And after that, you can hit him. And he does, he'll either walk or do a wave attack. And that's just a free opportunity for you to just go crazy on him. Well, I was stance broken that time, but also in between each parry, you can do two auto attacks and still have enough recovery to get the parry off on the next attack. So once he gets up, he'll do his parry thing. All right. So for this guy, his pattern is parry, auto, auto, parry, auto, auto, and then third parry, auto, auto, auto. I don't want him to die. I'm going to reset him and come back. So pretty much each boss has a set pattern that they follow. Once you learn that pattern, it's very easy for this guy. It's parry, auto, auto, parry, I missed, auto, auto, parry, auto, auto, and then he'll walk or do the wave attack. You dodge into this and then auto, auto, auto. Now he'll either go into a walking stance or a parry stance. So he went into a walking stance. That's more free hits for you. And then he'll go into a parry stance, auto, auto parry auto auto and then you could do the third parry auto auto and that's pretty much his pattern he'll either um in between the parries he'll either go on a random walk he'll just start walking sideways it's a free opportunity to hit him or he'll do the wave attack which you can dodge into and damage him and sometimes he'll throw a double circle attack which i don't know if he'll do it now it might be a halfway um transition attack let me see if that's the case. All right, so now he should be in his second stage, I think, and he should have an additional attack, which is like a circular wave that you have to dodge, and it comes out twice. Hopefully he does it. There we go. That's one. That's two. That's like his phase transition move, if you will. And I think that's all the patterns he has at level 60, or level 55, rather. 
I mean, each boss has like their own patterns that you want to learn and master. The only move you want to be careful about is like it's um big explosion, but he does that in phase two. So he's a swipe. That, that's a single swipe, and you have a window of opportunity to attack. This is a dive down. That's also fairly easy to dodge. Another opportunity to attack him. This one is he he'll pull you in. Or actually, he's not doing it right now. All right, he's just being weird. Now he'll pull me in. Now you can dodge it from the front, or if you get behind him, he'll completely not do the move at all. So that just cancels the move straight up. I think this is four swipes. One, two, or two swipes. He'll eventually add like a slam down to that. And that's his like one away move. Right, he's gonna pull me in. This is what happens if you don't dodge the pull. He'll do four beak, um, beak swipes. And then a slam down. But again, if you just circle behind them, that move completely cancels out. What else, mister? There's the swipes. And then the slam down. And then he can do an evade run. Just be ready for that anytime. Like, you can just randomly try to evade. Where he does a full circle spin. There's another combo. That was only a two swipe. What else, mister? This, anytime he backs up, that's when he's doing the beak attack. And he's gonna pull you in first, but if you like, if you come right behind him, that cancels that move completely. And then the other big thing is to make sure you do um, swapping in between inputs. All right, the easiest, most brain dead swap to do is the Q swap. So it's Q, swap, Q, swap, Q, swap. So it's basically Q2, Q3, Q1. So for example, on this guy, Q2, Q3, Q1. And basically all the echoes were going off while I was swapping. So I was getting the benefit of all the echoes without being locked into that echoes animation. So his echo, it'll transform the character into the echo and it locks me into that animation. Um, this one also, for example, like I turn into the golem, I'm locked into the animation. And for her also, I'm locked into this animation. So it completely bypasses that um, animation lockdown time and then with this guy his ultimate uh, or his heavy attack as you can see like he did that slam down while I was swapped so I could have pressed my Q and then swapped back to him um, to continue his combo right after again some some of these could be difficult for some people but like the easiest one and the most brain dead one in my opinion is the Q swap where you press Q2 Q3 Q1 and you'll basically have all the echoes going off at once all right, last thing is uh, just a quick touch up on terms because uh, they can be very confusing. So all these terms are here. This is your basic attack. Resonance skill is your E skill. Forte circuit is whatever you can perform when this bar is full or half full. Resonance liberation, which is your ultimate or your R key. Intro skill is anytime you swap into a character when they're ready, they'll do an intro skill. That's when they're entering the battlefield. And then outro skill is when they're leaving battlefield this bar right here down here this is your outro skill bar so you can prepare this even outside of combat so if you look it's slowly filling up once this thing is filled and i swap my character does an outro skill um these characters will light up during battle which means their intro skill is ready so when you swap to them they'll do an intro skill again i don't know why they use such confusing terms but they did it is what it is